In this video, PowerDirector mobile app version 6.9 keyframe controls. We're going to be talking about the opacity, rotation, position and scale. So what does that actually mean? The good news is that PowerDirector first off the bat has added this thing on the side. Can you see where it's a bar where I can make things very small and expand the timeline or middle size, which I think is this one or make it big, which makes it really useful to actually talk about this particular video. So version 6.9, the first up is the enjoy precision editing with the keyframe controls, which is opacity, rotation, position, scale, and a few other things. I think the answer here is to look at how this works. Now, the first thing to get people started is that the screen that you see up top is position X and Y you can clearly read it and scale and rotation you can clearly read it I am making this video and using a 10 inch tablet watch what happens the moment I click the picture in picture image when I hit transform you can notice at the bottom of the screen down here that I've got position X and Y over the top of each other that must be a bug on maybe a tablet I've sent feedback already so let's get cracking with what's going on. Now, if you're new to keyframe editing, what that actually means is that if I tap the edit for this particular football, and I'm gonna say it's a football, not a soccer ball, because that's obviously the American version of it, which is a great sport, and it's the same sport. If I tap keyframe, you can see I've got these little white diamonds, and keyframing is telling the football where to be at any given moment. So up there, it's gonna be at the top, then it goes to the bottom, and then it goes up there. That is what keyframing animation is all about. It tells an object where to be in time and space. So if I wanted to play that in its full splendor, it now comes along and the ball goes in. You notice there's no rotation at the moment. The ball goes down, it's exactly the same size, and then it goes up, and we're all probably all thinking, can we make that any better? And the answer is, yes, we can. So in this example, this is one I made earlier. I'm just gonna bring this, oh, sorry. Uh, doesn't matter, that's fine, isn't it? Let's tap there. Let's bring that down and then hit play. This is one I made earlier. So the ball comes in and notice this time it rotates itself, rotates itself and goes away. So that's one example. Oh yeah, okay, I forgot about that. I made that to come back again. You can see the ball is a more natural way where it is actually just subtly rotating. This one, boom. That was quite nice, wasn't it? And what we've done here is bring this up. And what I've done is I've made a red background. I've made two balls which I can transform. And so all I'm actually doing, and I'll show you exactly how to do this in a couple of seconds, and that is the first object, which is the left-hand football, goes up, stops there, then it goes out. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. There you go. There's not many keyframes to this, but it's a very, very good way of doing it. So the ball comes in and sizes and moves away. Second one down here is exactly the same, except it's the right-hand ball that comes in and that one spins a lot faster and goes smaller. And that is an example as well. Now, this example, if we have a look at some fish, which is a Pixabay stock image, the image of the fish goes through, and then there is a diver. And you'll notice on the secondary picture-in-picture uh, -picture here, or the first, or the second timeline, I've started to look at following. And you watch this. If I hit keyframe, you can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six keyframes, which is following an individual fish. So the actual clip looks like this when it's finished. I'm new to this because I'm bringing this down to um, maximize the screen recording. So watch. So here is the diver, kind of half ge gestures. Hey, keep, a, keep an eye on, I was gonna say, Louis the fish. And you can see that the PNG yellow circle there, very carefully, keyframes follows that individual fish where it looks like another friend comes along and off they go. I think that's pretty much it, apart from to say that if I wanted to keyframe something, let's go back to the beginning here and all I'm going to do, and this is a slight demo, 
is I'm going to say, what if there was a football underneath the water? Then I would add a image, which in this case would happen to be, I believe, the ball. And there it is. And then I go back to have the ball there. And this time I'm going to just expand with my fingers to say that first thing I want to make this ball to keyframe and I hit keyframe. Now at the moment what I will do is I'll make the ball perhaps drop in from the top and I will hit right hand side the diamond. That starts off the keyframe so as it comes through I now want the ball to be here and I want to make it say rotate really small about there then as it goes through notice that the ball's not actually moving because I'm just doing it by hand at the moment I'm going to do a big rotation and make the ball end up say over there then I can come back I'm just going to tap that and let's see what it actually looks like so we've got the fish and that was a quick one now what you'll find is the ball comes in goes small and goes bigger as it rotates out. That was just an example. So what I did say is opacity as well. So if I've got this in and this time I'm going to hit opacity and at the moment I'm going to bring that down to about 6% hit keyframe. As it comes through to this area I'm going to bring that up to about 100 Notice that I don't have to tap keyframe again on the right hand side, but I can take the keyframe away with a minus sign on it. And then as it goes out to about there, so about there, I want to bring that keyframe down to nothing. And that's all I have to do. Then I have to come back and then let's just see what that looks like. I know it's quite a quick keyframe, this one. So in other words, what happened was the opacity came in, you can see that the opacity is increasing it gets up to be a hundred which is a solid of course hundred percent and then it goes away again that's pretty much it isn't it so that was the end of this video on these new features I'm just going to find something here to make sure we know what we're talking about which was 6.9 if your device allows keyframe controls opacity rotation position and scale there are a couple of little extra things in here. One is the drag and drop for adding clips at the start of the timeline. And there is another one which I've not understood whatsoever, which is the new option in settings to show file names in your library. I've been searching around, I'm not sure what it actually does. And that's pretty much it, isn't it? On there, so let's just go out with my outro with, he says, with the, let's do the bouncing ball thing. Bouncing ball, are they going to collide? Boom! Yes, they are. And then we'll finish with a little Louis the fish goes by. And then we'll finish up on here with this. Here's our fish. And then until next time, this was Mike Downs with a Power Director app tutorial. Goodbye.